God inspired the Word of God to be written in English, but at least the New Testament in Greek. So in this language we do have one word that can sum up what Christianity is all about. And this word is tetelestai, which means it has been and will always be finished. Everything. Everything necessary for your forgiveness, life, and salvation is finished, accomplished completely by your Lord Jesus the Christ. All the Father's wrath against sin, all the devil's power over you, all the world's anxieties, and all the old Adam's wicked desires are dealt with and put to death in your crucified Savior Jesus. All the problem of your sin is resolved your failures fixed, your mistakes covered up in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus, your crucified Christ, all the work is finished so that you can live forever in heaven with Him. But we've heard this message before. We, we know that we don't save ourselves, but rather that Jesus does all the work for us. When things are going well, it's an easy matter to hold fast to the reality that Jesus has accomplished all things for us. When the burden of sin seems light and life is partly cloudy, we buy into the fact that Jesus does everything for us solely by grace because He loves us. But my friends, what, what about those times when sin is heavy? And life is nothing but flood waters. How are we after we've fallen into the same temptation again and succumbed? You know that feeling like you can't do anything right. You're addicted to that sin, to that desire, to that feeling. You're controlled by that sin, that secret mistake, that known only by you Failure, that hope no one catches you, temptation. And after you've fallen again, the devil is quick to send out his demons to harass you, to ring in your ears that you are worthless, you are good for nothing, and this time God will not forgive you. If you don't know what it feels like to be in that type of despair over your sin, I can't convince you what it feels like. It doesn't feel good. It's miserable. And the only ones who experience this type of weight of sin are those of the faith. If you don't experience sin this way, then that means you are an unbeliever. The faith does not exist in your heart. For this sin, it doesn't fade away in your memory but instead grows uglier by the day in your conscience. And when you begin to forget the feeling of despair, the, the world reminds you of just how big a hypocrite you are. And there's nothing you can do in this place, nothing you can do because the devil won't let you crawl your way out of this despair, but instead will drag you into deeper despair, great shame and vice. And no self-help motivation or temporal exercise of conscience can overcome sin, death, world, and the power of the devil. No. Nothing you can do can overcome this deep despair. And how do I know this? Well, God died on the cross. God was put to death. If the Son of God died on the cross for sin, then there's nothing you can do to get out of sin, to remove yourself from that despair. There's nothing you can do to make yourself feel better either. No, the only thing that helps you in despair and rescues you from the jaws of hell is the proclamation of that beautiful gospel, Tetelestai. It is finished. For St. Paul fleshed out this beautiful word in 2 Corinthians saying, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become.
become the righteousness of God. My friends, you're in good company. You're in the good company of Cain the murderer, David the adulterer, Peter the denier, Thomas the doubter, Judas the betrayer, Saul the persecutor, and all the unworthy sinners who were before you and who will come after you. You are in the good company of sinners, failed saints, children of God who have, who have and continue to make mistakes. You are in the company of sinners. And if you say, well, no, I'm not, or you don't desire to be in that company, then, well, Jesus isn't for you. Because Jesus came to die for real sinners. He came to rescue you in any situation in which you find yourself. He came to bear it all for you. As it is written, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For as it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. On the cross, Jesus claimed as his own all your sins. Think about that for a minute. This means that now all your sins, all your failures, all your Mr. Hyde outbursts, all your mistakes at living righteously are now Jesus' sins and failures. And this means that the Father no longer sees you as the sinner, but rather his beloved Son as the sinner. He sees Jesus failing, making mistakes, and transgressing the law. He sees His Son fattened up with your sins, puffed up with your failures. I mean, this is, this is heavy stuff, everybody, that, that on the cross, we have Jesus assuming all of our sins. Why does this happen? Because God the Father not only hates sin, he hates sinners too. Man, have you ever heard that phrase? God hate the sin but love the sinner? I think that's in 3 Corinthians chapter 5. <coughs> it's nowhere in the Bible because it's not true. If God loved sinners like loved who sinners were, then the Son of God would never have died on the cross. This is how heavy it is, our condition of being sinful, but it also shows us because Jesus has assumed this condition for us. How much our Lord loves us. For Jesus became our sin. He became us. And now all the Father sees is our iniquities, our thoughts, words, and deeds. And so is fulfilled the prophecy. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. It has been and will always be finished for you, my friends. In the wounds of Jesus you have peace, absolute peace of mind, body, conscience, and soul, meaning you are reconciled to the Father, an eternal child of God and co-heir with Jesus of heaven. For Jesus has taken care of everything for you, and he will continue to do so for all eternity. It is finished. Your salvation is won and accomplished. And Jesus does everything right for you. In his name, amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. amen. We sing the 